I'm Joey from Extra Boxing. This is Will the Power Coics out of Power Boxing and Fitness out of West Chicago. So I had a fan ask me how to set up overhand rights. And I love this question because a lot of people don't know how technical this punch is. They think it's just like a brawler's Hail Mary lucky punch that you land by chance and it does a lot of damage. And actually, no, for me, this is a very technical punch. It's a very clever tactical punch. And I'm gonna show you how to set it up. So the first way that I set up the overhand right, right, which is this big, powerful shot curving over the top. The first way is I try to create a low threat. And by a low threat is I want him to lower his guard by threatening him from a low position. You can do this in one of two ways. One is you move your head here to a low position, or the other way is that you jab to the body. I'm gonna start with the head movement. If you think about it, instinctually, your opponent's guard is always gonna follow your head. So if I bring my head super up close, he's gonna follow my head, he's gonna focus it close. If I bring my head down here, he's instinctually gonna to wanna to lower his hand. Right, because wherever my head goes, he's gonna try to protect me against me attacking from that direction. So it's as simple as I lower my head, he lowers his guard, this comes over the top. It's just like that, it's exactly like that, boom. Okay, the other way is I lower my head and maybe he jabs down at me. This is very common and as you can see, his chin's wide open, boom, right there. Because when we jab down, our chin is open, right? If we jab up, the chin is covered by the shoulder, but we jab down, and for this reason, I tell a lot of my fighters, don't jab down. When you have a guy that's, that's doing loopy stuff down here, slipping and never jab down at him. Or, or maybe he go, comes down here, boom. And he comes over the top, it's very dangerous to jab down. Another thing I can do to create that low guard is I just jab to his body, bam, I pop him right there. And if he blocks it, boom, this comes over the top, right? So there you go, that's how I create the low guard. Second tactic is I create a, a straight threat, okay? So instead of a low threat, where I try to get him to lower his guard, I create a straight threat, where I make him focus his guard forward. And I do that by, with a hard jab. Bah! Again, bah, boom, and this comes around. So if I hit him really hard with the jab, maybe once I hit him really hard with the jab, the second time I do it, some fighters may parry and do tricky stuff, other fighters might just put everything forward into his guard. Boom, and this comes around the top. Another way to mess with this straight threat, if he's expecting a really hard jab now, bah, he might overcommit already, and I don't even have to throw that jab. I just throw a soft jab or a feint. Here it is, bah, right? So that way the right hand comes a little quicker because I wasn't wasting so much time shoving the left jab out. A third way you can do it is use two jabs, and I learned this from watching Mike Tyson. He does a double jab right hand. And it looks like, it looks like jab, jab, right hand. But what it actually is, is a full jab, half jab, right hand. So it really messes with your opponent's timing because he's expecting jab, jab, right, but instead it's jab, jab, right. So it's punch, half punch, right hand. It's very quick, it's hard to see. I'll try it on the camera so you can feel the, the difference in rhythm. Jab, jab, right, jab, jab right. It, the right hand comes a little quicker because the second jab was kind of a faint, was kind of like just a, just a quick halfway shot. It screws with the rhythm. Now the third thing that I can do is to just trade hand, right hands with my opponent. So this is very common when uh, I'm up against the ropes, I'm getting beat up, my opponent doesn't respect me anymore, or he's just being super aggressive, doesn't care about getting countered. This is a great opportunity for something like that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wait for this brawler He's brawling, swinging wide, and I wait for him. After he throws, uh, when he's about to throw his right hand is when I trade with him. Boom, right there. And what I'm doing is I'm waiting for him to, to cock his head back, especially if he cocks his head back. I'm watching his head position. So I'm gonna be here, I'm gonna be the puncher, and you're gonna see how he times me, okay? So I'm the brawler, and he's gonna watch for my head position, and as soon as I'm about to swing the right hand, boom! And it's a huge knockout shot. The little nuance that I'm gonna tell you when you do this kind of brawling punch, especially on the inside, okay, go ahead, just start swinging. What I'm gonna do is when I throw this, I'm gonna dip my head out of the way and it's almost a blind shot, okay? Boom, right there. I just dipped my head out of the way, I swung it clean and it's a good chance it's gonna land because he's swinging himself into the shot. So there you have it, three ways to set up the overhand right. You create a low threat to make him lower his guard. You create a straight threat to make him Focus his guard so much forward. Or the third option is you just trade right hands with him. Either of these, if you land it, you get lucky, you can do a lot of damage. You can probably get a knockdown 
or even a knockout. But the bottom line is, it's actually a very technical punch. It's a very tactical punch. It's not just a wild swinging punch that you throw with, with uh, no strategy or anything like that. You actually have to set it up. And now, since you watch the video, you can. I'm John from Max Boxing, Will the Power Coix from Power Boxing and Fitness. We'll see you guys next time.